I think it was a John Cha who said that the path is like a mango. It doesn't have a beginning, it doesn't have an end that you can point to and say, this is where you are now and you're going to move over someplace else. You basically stay right here, just as the mango stays in one place on the tree, and it ripens. Your practice will ripen that way, too. And we do have a goal in the practice. Our goal is to put an end to suffering. But we have to learn how to relate to that goal in the right way. There is the pain that the Buddha calls renunciate pain, where you realize that it is possible to put an end to suffering, but you're not there yet. Other people have done it, but you haven't done it yet. It's a painful thought, and it is part of our motivation. But we can't let the pain overwhelm us. We have to remember that when the goal is found, it's going to be found right here. And so it's a question of learning how to settle in properly right here. And if you don't like the idea of a goal hanging over your head, remind yourself that a large part of settling right in here is learning to find something that's pleasing right here. As the Buddha said, you want to find a sense of ease, a sense of pleasure, a sense of rapture, and indulge in it. So you get to choose. What kind of breathing feels good right now? When you find something that seems promising, you hold on to it. You stick with it. Because it will develop. It's not the case that when rapture hits, it hits out of nowhere. 100%. It grows on you gradually. The same with the pleasure. It grows on you. In the beginning, it's not all that impressive, but you can ask yourself, what can I do to make it feel at least a little bit better? What kind of breathing would I like right now? This is a large part of the concentration practice, is finding something you like. You're not doing this because anyone else told you. As John Fung liked to use to say, we're nobody's servant. We're not here because anybody paid us or gave us permission to practice. We're here because we want to. And so what would make you want to stay in the present moment? What kind of breathing, what kind of sense of pleasure in the body would make you want to stay? And steer the breath in that direction. Dogen, the Zen master, made the comment one time that the development of the path is no different from the realization of the cessation of suffering. In other words, it's not the case that you develop the path as one thing and you realize the cessation as something else. And there's not going to be a place in the path where you have to drop the path and turn on the question of, well, where is the cessation of suffering and how do I realize that. It's going to be found right here. Everything you need to know is going to be found right here. So even though we do have a goal at the end of the path, and it will come at a point in time that's not here at the moment, but you're going to find it right here. And so have a sense of what is just right as you're settling down. This is a point that a John Fuang made a lot of, that samma and samma samadhi, right concentration, has to be understood as just right, because you need to balance a lot of things. You think about the breath, and then you evaluate it. Now, the evaluation does involve thinking. Asking questions, making comments, 
and it seems like a disturbance. But it's actually an important part of adjusting things inside so they feel good. And John Lee's images of holding on to a post and running around. As long as you keep your gra grasp on the post really solid, really firm, okay, you can run around the post as many times as you want, and you don't, don't get dizzy. If you run around outside without holding on to anything, you get dizzy really fast. So you're going to be thinking about this one thing, about the breath. Content yourself with the fact that whatever pleasure you're going to find out of the practice, it's going to be found right here. Whatever sense of fulfillment you're going to find in the practice will be found right here. So adjust things. Make sure the breath is not too long, too short, too deep, too shallow. Have it just right. And then adjust your mind. This is where those steps in breath meditation come in, in the third tetrad. You notice that the mind has too much energy. What do you do to steady it, to concentrate it? If it has too little energy, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling discouraged, what can you do to uplift it, gladden it? This requires directed thought and evaluation, too, because sometimes the breath will perform that function. Other times you've got to think about other things, topics that will give more energy to the mind, or topics that will steady the mind. The ones that give energy are things like recollection of your virtue, recollection of your generosity, recollection of the devas, realizing that the qualities that make a person in a deva are qualities that you have in yourself. So you're headed in the right direction. That can lift you up. Things that steady you are contemplation of the body in terms of its different parts. Because if you find that lust or desire is pulling you away, well, what is there? Which part are you lusting after? The, the liver, stomach, the contents of the stomach, the blood, the lymph, the lungs? None of those things. You think about the themes of inconstancy, the themes of not-self. Those steady the mind. When the mind has been chastened a little bit like this, then it's ready to settle down. So you are thinking. There is a, a disturbance of the thinking, but it's a necessary disturbance. This is what you find with all the levels of concentration, that as you go from one level to another, there is a disturbance in the first that you're going to be letting go of when you get to the next. But you have to let go at the right time, because those disturbances in the earlier levels of concentration actually perform a function. When you need your direct thought and evaluation, it's because the mind and the breath are not fitting together quite right. So you've got to think about them, look at them, examine them, use your ingenuity in getting them to fit together. It's like putting together a chest of drawers. The drawers don't fit quite right, they're a little bit hard to get in, hard to get out. Okay, which parts do you sand? You sand them just right. If you send them too much, then they get loose. So you work on them so they're just right, and the different parts fit together just right. Then you can drop the direct of thought and evaluation, and can be nourished by the sense of ease, the sense of rapture. And as long as you need that rapture to give you energy, you stick with it. There will come a time, though, when it feels like too much. That's when you let go. It's in this way that each of these factors performs its function, and then you can put it aside. And John Fuhring had the image of a, of a rocket going to the moon. He says the booster 
takes you somewhere, and then you have to put the booster aside. Then there's the second stage, you put that aside. But you have to know exactly have to know exactly when is the right time to put them aside. And you learn that by trial and error. But it's all a matter of settling in right here and asking yourself what feels really good, which feels better. You're learning to become a connoisseur of your concentration, a connoisseur of your breath, a connoisseur of the potentials in the present moment. And as with any connoisseur, you are indulging your idea of what feels really good. There's no objective standard out there saying that your breath has to be like this, or the place you focus has to be right there. You can focus anywhere on the body you want. You can take pleasure in any kind of breathing you like. No one's imposing this on you. This is your expression of freedom. People have trouble living with goals. Usually have this problem right there. The goal is being imposed by somebody else. Somebody else is out there with a measuring stick. And they feel they have to deny their own pleasure in the present moment to meet up with somebody else's standards. But here the standards are your sense of what feels right in the present moment. And if you stay with it long enough and you're honest enough with yourself that your sense of what's right, what's just right, will get more refined. And it's in the refinement that your discernment gets developed. We think of the path. The image the Buddha gives is of the continental shelf off of India. There's a gradual slope going on and then a sudden drop. The gradual slope is the gradual development of your discernment as you get more and more discerning as to what's just right. Remember, this is the middle way. And finding the just right point in the middle is a lot harder than going to extremes. With extremes, you just push, push, push. doesn't require much discernment. But the just right point in the middle, that requires a lot of discernment. And you're going to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but it gets more and more focused with time. And a large part of the motivation is because it's really pleasing. It feels really right. Not just pleasant, but right. Like the mind settles down where you have a feeling that it really should be right here. Again, not because anyone else told you, because how is anybody going to tell you where you are? You know yourself. So let your own sensitivity be your guide. your own desire for a sense of well-being in the present moment. And then that way you find that you reach the goal without even thinking about it. Some of the Johns talk about making your body the path. Well, this is how you do it. You stay right here. You simply get better and better and finding a way to enjoy staying right here. If you follow that direction, you're sure to arrive at the goal.